and me and my me and my father already all, uh, we're all good on it. We're on the same page. So I, I believe Devin Haney will be next. We gonna we're gonna choose a fight date. We're gonna choose a fight month because we're the A side. Obviously, he's younger. He's younger than myself, and I'm younger as well. Um, I think that he does still have a lot more development to do. I don't believe I don't believe he's the strongest guy at 135, but he is a tremendous fighter. I don't think anyone outside of myself uh, would beat him or would uh, would uh, give him as much problems that we are going to give him. I don't think anyone outside of myself uh, would beat him. Pick one fight. What is the mega fight in the sport? Teofimo Lopez versus who in a couple of years or next year? I don't even know. Devin Haney? I would say Devin Haney. Teofimo, in the past, he downplayed Devin Haney on more than one occasion. However, recently, while Teo was trash-talking, like you pointed out, he revealed a little of the truth. Maybe he revealed too much of the truth by saying, nobody beats Devin Haney but me at the lightweight division. So what's your take on that comment? Obviously, he always trash talking Devin Haney like he's a nobody claiming it. he's not the next Floyd. What the hell are people talking about this and that and the third? But he says nobody could beat him well, but he's, him. He's promoted, he's promoted by uh, no other than Mr. I lied yesterday. Today I'm telling the truth. So, <laughs> you know, um, hey, All we right. can't like I say, we we don't we don't weigh as much as, as what he says is people might think he's kind of all over the place, but you know, we know that he has an opportunity. He's not just blowing smoke that he can't make it happen. He actually can make it happen. And through that, you won't catch us off guard. We're waiting, we're knocking on the door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't got to sneak up on us, you know what I mean? We at your doorstep. But it's not the the Tiafimo, the takeover, the father and son that we're used to hearing and, you know, that we expected, you know, when it came time to, you know, making this thing happen. Because they're both the same ages and well, they've been talking about making this fight happen and what needed to happen and, and all those things. And I think, you know, with the belts was one of those things that they said when they get all the belts or when it was for something. So... I think this is, you know, a great opportunity for them two guys to uh, to make something uh, magical happen. Why do you think Teofimo had a different energy for Lomachenko than he does for Devin Haney? What's your opinion on that? Why is that? Well, I mean, obviously he talked about over and over again that he's a big lightweight. And, you know, he knew that he had a, a, he had a tremendous size advantage on Lomachenko. You know, that combined with youth and, and also, you know, he's a... Uh, cream of the crop of, of those young kids. He knew that he was going to pose um, problems for for uh, Lomachenko, as well as he he knew when they met up and had that uh, that infamous meeting between the two of them, Tifimo and Devin, that they both kind of mutually agreed that they both were looking for Loma. But Devin also is a big lightweight, and I think he might be bigger than Tiafimo. you know, uh, rangier, taller. He poses all the pro same problems for Tio that Tio would pose for some of the other smaller lightweights in the division. I do want to get your thoughts on what Tio Fimo said about Lomachenko. We want to believe uh, Tio, right? We want to believe Tio. We want to believe that he's sincere about the things he says. Yes. Uh, however, off the gate, he will say things like, oh, nobody wanted to fight Lomachenko. Guys like Devin Haney wanted to protect his O and fight Gamboa instead. Obviously, the whole world know Lomachenko requested witness protection. He got stripped, but in order to save face, he ordered witness protection to stay away from Devin. And I'm pretty sure Tio knows that because he requested the franchise title through email himself. So if Tio obviously know the truth, why he keep manipulating the public in order to make it seem like Devin Haney is fighting easier fights for money when we know Devin Haney aid Lomachenko surrender. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, listen to what people say, what they don't say, and what they never will say. One thing he did say recently in his last interview, he said that no one, no other lightweight can beat Devin Haney but him. So, you know, we take and weigh Teal Fimo's words that he says with like a grain of salt. Like I can't reiterate enough is that should those we get those two in the ring it's going to be something magical and uh tiafimo lopez has every opportunity to 
He has the franchise belt uh, that has been considered and called as a designation, a designation in Mauricio Suleiman, who said that it makes the big fights happen. So with that designation, it affords him the opportunity to then make a fight with Devin Haney. So we just have to just be as optimistic as we possibly can about the situation. Uh, Devin is a world champion, and that within itself explains the mandatories and the responsibilities that a champion has and a champion holds. That nullifies the argument that Tiafimo is undisputed because if it's somebody else in the division that's handling mandatories, then you're not just the only guy by yourself. Right. I guess what I'm saying is T.O., he don't speak truthfully when he talk about Devin, especially Devin Haney, out of the bunch. I mean, it's one thing to talk trash, to build up a fight, but it's another to lie and talk trash. For example, like when Floyd Mayweather used to trash talk as money made, he will say nobody got the blueprint to beat me because he was obviously undefeated. Now, imagine if Floyd Mayweather had a couple L's and he says nobody has the, the blueprint to beat me. It won't sound as effective. We won't believe Floyd, right? So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is when Teofimo says things about Devin Haney that he avoided Lomachenko, how can we believe anything else he says about sending a contract and wanting to fight Devin Haney? Because you figure it like this, is if you said you smashed Loma, right? If we weren't uh, avoiding Loma, we're not avoiding you. So you always you talk about, well, we avoided somebody, we're not avoiding you. Don't even talk about that. That's why I don't even want to even go into all the other stuff. I more so like to look forward to the fact that last night on his live, that's what he said. So I think right. that top rank, um, you know, and Bob Arum, you know, Bruce and Brad, the, 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 the Hall of Fame matchmakers that they have over there, you know, have some things to think about, you know, in terms of, you know, what they're going to do based on this, this young fella, this young champion speaking those words into existence. So we just have to, like I say, we have to see, you know, and I'll cross that bridge when it gets there, you know, if it's not, if it doesn't happen. Yeah. And just a last note, obviously, what Lomachenko did is what Reddick Bo did to Lennox Lewis. That's how Lennox Lewis became the WBC champion at heavyweight, the same way Devin Haney did by making the champion surrender the title, which is just as effective as beating the champion, if you ask yes. me. Now, um, I do have a, another question for you. How did you choose Lomachenko? Because I did not choose him. He requested, Canelo requested, so we sent out a vote and we analyzed his history. Ooh, Canelo and Lomachenko requested? Absolutely. Oh, he just made headlines. Lomachenko. <laughs> he just made headlines. Lomachenko, uh -huh. top rank, requested. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, we analyzed the request. Uh -huh. Top of the top. Find the franchise belt. Can you define it? The franchise is not a belt. It's not a championship. It's a designation given to elite unique fighters who carry the industry of the sport of boxing. Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko are two sensational fighters who carry the industry. Ask, ask Cameron Duncan, do top rank have like uh, um, uh, columns of fighters? And they say, we don't want this guy fighting the black fighter. We don't want this fighter fighting a Mexican fighter and so on and so forth. You gotta get into the racial stuff, huh? No, I'm not. I'm just. I, I'm asking. Uh, that's a theory there by the greatest matchmaker, probably in my opinion, ever. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not gonna mention his name either, but uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And uh, he used to have a thing up on his board: NBF, no black fighters. Uh -huh. And when I was taught to bring up a fighter, um. You know, and again, it's just, he used to say to me, you can go anywhere in the country and I'm going to leave it at this. I don't want to go into a long discussion mm -hmm. because yeah. people are people in God's eyes and yeah. we're all the same. He used to say to me, you can go anywhere into a city in America mm -hmm. or anywhere in the world and ask a white guy. And he didn't say any other, he didn't say anything about a Hispanic, anything. Ask a white guy to throw a jab, and half of them are going to turn backwards and 
sort like a girl and everything. Ask any black man on a street corner in any city in the world, and they will snap out a jab in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I used to laugh. He said, they're just more physically gifted. Mm -hmm. And he said, and so they have speed and better to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal. So I said, okay. And I've lived by that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, you know, I don't want to sound like some weird guy, but, um, you know, you're trying to be safe with your guys. And so, yeah, yeah, there is a thing about that, you know, but not in a bad way, in a very respectful way, you know, to be careful. So that's all. The mask man even said they doing that to protect them. Right. If somebody beat them, but they don't get a belt. There you go. The franchise belt is to protect them from the big black guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you 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 would favor Devin Haney to beat Vasily Lomachenko? And with the fighter, I'm only going to put him in a fight that I believe that he can win. Right. So, I I don't know how to answer that question. Did you say you would only put your fighter in a position where in a fight where he can win? Where I believe he could win. Yeah, I don't put a fighter in uh, where he has no chance and he's just in there for a payday for me and him. I don't do that. So, so is but it I more about how you I don't feel? put a fight out. That again goes back to Leonard Ellaby. What he was trying to say is risk reward. Right. So if you were in a situation where you felt like, I'm going to just use hypotheticals. If you thought that uh, Devin Haney was a bad matchup for Tiafimo Lopez, in essence, you wouldn't make that fight because you didn't want to put Tiafimo in a situation where you felt like he couldn't win. Is that what I'm hearing? Only if, I mean, you sometimes make a fight because it, if, let's say the fighter has a 40% chance of winning. So he's like, right. in your mind, an underdog. If the reward is great, you make that fight. It's risk-reward. 